All right. You know, guys, I was uh, passing this house. Well, let me just start at the beginning. I have a thesis of what rich people do. I have a thesis of, because this actually, there's another sign down there. And essentially, this is a house for sale. Now, I've been driving about this, driving by this house for years. And essentially, what's going on with this house is it's going to be a, a teardown. This is literally sitting on five acres. And I'm going to show you the neighborhood that this house, which is going to be torn down very soon because they're because essentially they had a contract on this house the first week which tells me that someone who lives in this neighborhood actually has been looking at this property as well. Because I was just wondering when they were gonna sell it and when was someone going to buy it and they were gonna tear it down and build a mansion. Now, since this is five acres, they could build five houses here. And it's a pretty flat, level lot but here's the kicker and I'm going to prove it to you because essentially I want to talk about my thesis I get a lot of pushback on paying cash for something I'm consistently hearing hey Glendon billionaires get mortgages this is what the smart money does and I'm consistently hearing that so I was pleasantly surprised when I did some research on this property, which was built in 1952. You know what the average size of a house was in 1952? It was 1,100 square feet. This house is probably close to 3,000 square feet. And it was built in 1952 and I believe the original owners lived in this house from 52 until 2007, which is the time that it hit the market. So what I believe was going to happen was someone was going to renovate this because I feel this is why all of the floors, at least downstairs, have been um, taken apart. Actually, that's a sign that someone had a dream or perhaps a concept of renovating this place because it's, it's a huge house. It's a huge house and essentially, apparently some vandals have been up all up in here because, you know, the door is broken and essentially, wow, that was low. There's been a lot of damage Good Lord, look at all this. This is clearly a house from the 50s, but no one has lived in this house for decades. And there's a lot of broken glass. I don't understand why. There are holes in the wall, but during this heyday, this was a magnificent house. And it is about to be torn down 
and a mansion is gonna be built here. Or two mansions, or essentially three mansions. So these are the bedrooms. It is crazy. And this is a bedroom. I don't think there was a concept of a master bedroom. And that was a bedroom. Notice this house was built in 1952 and <laughs> there is the bathroom, which has some issues. And I guess this was a, a den. But let's get back to my thesis. <laughs> so the last time somebody was in here was 2009. Why is there a license plate? I don't know. It's kind of funny. But once again, this was a large house for its time period. Very, very large house. And upon my research, I found out some interesting stuff. It's very interesting stuff. And I, I could have just went through the front door. It was open. All right, so let's get to the thesis. Now, I have on my other channel that real millionaires with cash pay cash for stuff. And a lot of asset-based millionaires who don't have cash will finance things because they, not necessarily because they want to, they have to. Now, this house behind me, right? Guess how much they paid for this house five years ago? Five years ago. They paid 2,000, well, excuse me. They paid $2.2 million for this house five years ago. Now, I went ahead and went to check out the property records. And I noticed this house is in an LLC. And it's not just a normal, regular LLC. It is an LLC that is in the, the address of the property. Which means that that LLC was created for this property. And whoever bought this property paid cash. And they let it sit for five years. And recently, because it just came on the market two weeks ago, and literally the first week it was under contract. Now, I have lived in this neighborhood um, probably 12 years. So I knew what was going to happen to this house. It was just a matter of time. I did not know the lot was five acres. That is a massive amount of land in this neighborhood, which I'm about to show you. All right, the first thing we're going to get into is this property is being for sale for 3.1.9 million. And also, when I was doing my research, I came across a lot of houses on Long Island Drive. Long Island Drive, zip code 30327. Check it out. A lot of these houses were in LLCs. And the LLCs were in the name of the property, which means that this house is paid for. With my thesis, I've been saying this for the longest and I get a lot, a lot of pushback from the broke posse 
the posse that has no money the posse that don't even have five thousand dollars cash in their checking account pushing back on this what i say because they cannot conceive it they cannot imagine it many of the houses that you're about to see are paid off now actually <laughs> i went towards uh, Roswell Road. And this just to give you an example of this neighborhood, you will see many, many swimming pools. You will see many big bodacious houses. Uh, the reason that I feel, I don't know this person or a company or group of people that bought this house, but that is essentially one of the worst houses in the neighborhood and i showed you what the house looked like i actually went through it i mean you know let's go back to 1952. 1952 that was like a mansion that house is a probably 2800 to 3000 square feet with two kitchens which means there was a mother-in-law suite um that was a rich person's house in 1952. And it just shows you what happens to wealthy neighborhoods. Wealthy neighborhoods keep getting wealthier. You know, neighborhoods in the hood, they can actually take many steps backwards, but wealthy neighborhoods continue to get wealthy and they continue to appreciate because whoever spent the 2.2 million and they were spending it on the land that's what they were spending it on because they knew that's one of the few low budget apartment complexes off roswell road inside the perimeter uh there was one that was actually next to it that they tore down and built a multi-million dollar um development on but once again this is proof positive of my thesis that when people <clears throat> are cash rich, let, let's go ahead and talk about this. If you are an asset based millionaire, okay, you have a house, you have a portfolio, maybe you have some stocks and bonds, whatever you have. And that's gonna give you like a net worth of 1.1, 1.5, maybe $2 million. But you don't have no cash. You don't have no, <clears throat> you don't have no cash, man. And I am showing you, once again, Google, go to Zillow and put in th zip code 30327. This is the wealthiest zip code in Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Louisiana, Mississippi, and there's a few zip codes in Florida that are wealthier. So I am surrounded by money. I am surrounded by millionaires and I pay attention to what they do. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pools. Every house on every house in that section has a, well, yeah. They got a pool, they got a pool, they got a pool. This, this, is, my, this is my environment. I live in a wealthy environment. I don't say that to brag or to boast. I say that to illustrate to you guys that I get to see how truly rich people get down. There's a lot of felonious notions because essentially when I discovered this, and once again, like I said, I, I was driving by this house and when I saw the for sale sign and literally I saw the for sale sign on a Tuesday because it wasn't there Monday and Wednesday I saw under contract so that house was on the market for 24 hours before it was under contract 24 hours which lets me know that someone in the neighborhood got up on that because essentially Atlanta find homes, Southern, maybe some real estates call some people, call some developers, I don't know. But essentially, this property is literally a jewel 
in an oasis of wealth because <clears throat> the it's it's a large level lot here's another thing about this property it is centrally located you can go down long island drive and bust a right on roswell road in seven minutes be in heart of buckhead you will have access to the finest restaurants the finest shopping seven minutes away and whoever bought this property you see what's surrounding it it's the worst house in the neighborhood and even if someone was going to buy it and renovate it they would still have i like it's sitting on five acres you know that, that that's actually kind of reminiscent of how i grew up because i we grew up in the house that was sitting on two acres and typically when i was growing up people would have some acreage they wouldn't just have these houses just shoved up next to each other but once again this is proof positive of my thesis you can go to the georgia secretary of state and do a business search and put in long island drive you put in that and you will see all of these llc's in the addresses of homes and i guarantee you that if i was just drive around and write down some addresses i would find several more of these million dollars to multi-million dollar houses in llc's with uh, property llc's which means they paid cash they paid cash they did not finance whoever bought this property did not finance it because you know how i know they created an llc to put the title of property into which means when they sat down at the closing table the the property was titled into that llc there was no financing and i, I get it all the time hey, glennon man the people in your neighborhood man they're up to their eyeballs in debt like my next door neighbor paid cash for her house and spent 250 renovating it they ended up in the magazine they did such a beautiful job renovating that house let me go ahead and speak plainly let me speak honestly to you i lived in this neighborhood 12 years i am surrounded by wealth not fake wealth not rapper wealth not instagram wealth i am surrounded by real cash money millionaires and this is how cash money millionaires get down they pay cash for stuff how can you be in the debt to your eyeballs when you pay cash for a player once again I, I i i'm just i'm just trying to scream at y'all i'm just trying to let y'all know because i am on a mission to re-educate the financially illiterate people of youtube right now there are some people who feel that they can become an investor and become a millionaire it ain't gonna happen it ain't gonna happen today during the live stream we had a conversation where uh someone who's selling a course creator and i presented my thesis i said this person is probably smart they were probably making money but i guarantee you they were not making the kind of money that the course made and that person to her credit confirmed my thesis i may look like this but i ain't like that i understand you know you know how much money 10 million dollars is to make 10 million to her credit she made 10 million dollars in one year that is life changing generational wealth in one year and there's no telling how long she worked to get the skills to create the course that made that kind of money but to my credit like i laid it down like once again a lot of people want to challenge me based upon their emotional state of mind with no facts with no receipts with no proof with no methodology it's just hey glendon you're wrong because i feel that you're wrong all up in your feelings like kiki all up in your damn feelings because you don't want to listen to someone who knows more than you do 
Yeah, I, I, I'm an elitist motherfucker. I know more than you do. I know how to make money. I know how to make millions. I know how to build wealth. And this is one of the things that I am going to teach people. I'm on a mission to educate, to enlighten, to bring 100,000 people under the umbrella of being a corporate citizen. And you know, I can't get you, I can't get you up in, in the, under the umbrella lying to you and saying stuff that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. And this video is proof positive of what I have been saying for years. Once again, England and every, even billionaires get, you know, interesting fun fact. In 2018, Elon Musk financed five properties in California. This was before the Tesla, he was worth like 23 billion at the time. This is before Tesla stock took off. And Elon Musk at that position in time did not have a lot of cash. He didn't have a lot of cash. His investment was Tesla. Why would he be afraid to let loose the cash? He didn't have the cash. He couldn't let the cash go. He wanted to keep the money in his stock to keep it, preserve his wealth and with the stock. But he had the cash. Warren Buffett used to finance houses before he became a billionaire. Do that. There's an article where he financed his house in 2000, um, 1971. Or Warren Buffett didn't become a billionaire until 1985. He didn't become a billionaire in 1985. So when he bought this house, he was not a billionaire. And once again, I'm, I'm here to tell you that when you're dealing with sophisticated cash money millionaires, the game is different. I'm on the mission. And this is my mission to bring 100,000 people under the corporate citizen umbrella and to get these individuals to a $250,000 net profit per year. That's the level where you can have enough money to invest money and become a millionaire from an asset based standpoint. This, this is what we're going to be doing here. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos like this. I'm going to be bringing more proof of my thesis because essentially this is what's going to help you. I'm not going to help you become a corporate citizen. I'm not going to help you um, create generational wealth by lying to you. During my YouTube mastermind, it was, we were talking about this. We were talking about all of these quick money, fast money schemes and how I have actually departed that rim where you're looking at a three year journey. To make that money, man, you're looking at a three year journey. That's what you're looking at to make that money. So if you are impressed with the thesis of Glendon Cameron at the franchise tag, go below and enroll in the art of holding, which in April is going to include a eight week boot camp of a fast start of your business. Now, right now if you get the art of holding you can get that boot camp the boot camp is going to be a standalone product in april so you can either get the fast start boot camp or you can get the art of holding or i may put together some kind of bundle but your best way to get in is to get in now this is to help you to school you to educate you on the real principles of business. Once <clears throat> we get to this level of instruction and training, this is when we change the culture. Cause once again, I tell you guys the truth. I don't make up stuff. I don't just tell you stuff. So the link is below to the art of holding where you would get the fast start boot camp where we will be talking about starting businesses from scratch, taking you to the next level, getting you to a position where you can begin to work on your wealth.